I'm the only one that was very confused about this, but when you were talking about the instruments, I felt like it was a little bit of a run along ground excuse that I didn't understand half of it. Sure. Um, instruments don't error unless the people are erroring. And there has to be, um, I don't know what the term is, yeah, the procedures to check and calibrate every day. Right. I'm assuming for your type of job, because in the medical right. field they do that every day. Right. Before the machine's used, you calibrate it, make sure it's working accurately. Mm -hmm. What it sounded like you guys were saying is that the machines were making mistakes and you were throwing it off. No, I, 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 I know, but I, I, I tried to break right away exactly because I figured <laughs> not everybody in the audience has the, the level of expertise that some other folks are asking questions. When you're doing a test for environmental contaminants, your machine does not detect to zero. Okay? The machine, the, we're talking about parts per billion, which is one part out of a billion other parts. So very, very low concentrations. And you can't get a machine that is precise enough to say zero. So there is what's called a detection limit. And that is based on how good that machine is and how good the output is from the machine. The output has to be interpreted. The output isn't <coughs> benzene, nine. The output is a, a, a series of a, a, a line with peaks and valleys. And they have those peaks and valleys have to be interpreted by either a computer or by a technician to say that peak is benzene. And because it's this big, we know how much benzene that is. But you were saying something about if, it, if that chemical was put in different Right, right. Oh, I understand. I understand. Right. I do. I do. What I'm what I was saying was, if you take three samples from Waycross, Alaska, and Hawaii, and run it through the same machine, the machine is going to be what limits that detection limit. It's not necessarily the sample. So just because the samples were collected in different locations, it's not unusual that they had the same detection limit because the same machine was looking at. It. There may be some specific differences based on what's in that sample. Those are called interferences. But if there aren't interferences, the machine can only get as low as whatever it gets, to, which won't be zero. It'll be a number <coughs> higher than zero. The number okay. is actually going on all of these. And print it out on the report for numbers higher than the MCL. Right, that's what I guess. Or kind of for and kind of wash Which, in some of these chemicals, you know, you two parts per billion that news report on PCE, two parts per billion a mother can have in the first trimester and, and her child's going to have heart defects. I mean, we're not talking about very much stuff here. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I think the detection limit and, and, and I think the detection limit for TC was 0.5 parts per billion. In which one, is below, and point which four is below, the other one or right, which, is, which, are both below, which are both below two. Right, but okay. that still shows that it's moved off of CSX or somewhere, and no, it's moved it on to somebody else's It doesn't property. show that it came from CSX, and it doesn't show anything. What it says, is, and they weren't detected, they were below detection limits because that machine can only go down that far with that sample. With the other things you're talking about, with the heptachlor and toxophene, neither one of those chemicals have ever been detected in the groundwater at CSX. They are not regulated under their hazardous waste permit. No, you're right, they're not. But they're at all so, three wells so wait, on so three wait. different sides. Okay, and first of all, hold on. 